Hello, my name is Jacob Avila of 5 Minutes Sono, and today we're going to show you how to look at the right heart systolic function. Your probe of choice for this exam is going to be the phase array transducer. This is a cardiac examination, so the phase array is probably your best bet. Now, I gave a lecture on right heart function at a recent conference I was at, so I'm just going to play the audio from that. Now, there are a couple of different ways that you can assess RV function. The RV is a very geometrically complex shape, but the way that it contracts is really easy. It's basically just all one direction of contraction. The LV has like three different ways that it contracts, but the RV is pretty simple. So you can actually do uh, easy calculations. This is the equivalent of doing an ejection fraction for the left heart. The ejection fraction doesn't work as well for the RV because of the shape of the RV. It's not a nice concentric like cone. The RV is this weird like um, like a you know, kidney basin. You know the kidney basin that you have your patients throw up? It's kind of that, that shape. So it's difficult to get a good ejection fraction. So we do these things. We do S prime, which is systolic excursion velocity, TAPSI. This is the easiest one, so I'd focus in on this one. And you can also do fractional area change. Let's talk about TAPSI. So this, I, the reason why we say TAPSI is because it's way easier to say than tricuspid annular plane of systolic excursion. So it's basically how well that tricuspid annulus is moving during systole. So you got your apical four-chamber view. That's where you want to do this. And you're focusing in on this little thing right here. You're focusing in on what that annulus is doing. Is it moving well or is it not? You can eyeball this, but it's better to just measure it out. There's a binary thing. Is it doing well or is it not? This is a patient with some right heart enlargement, right? I mean, we have, if we look at the, the ratio between this and this, this is at least one-to-one, -one, if not more than one-to-one. -one. But I'm wondering, is this an acute RV failure? I mean, it's definitely enlarged, but is this something that is acute? Is this, a, uh, is this patient's shortness of breath caused by right heart failure or a consequence of a pulmonary issue that can be causing that right heart failure? So what you do is you stick your M-mode uh, transducer, your M-mode um, cursor, right over that annulus um, on the lateral border, and you'll get a waveform that looks like this. There's a bunch of different colors on here. You just want to pick one color and follow that color. You can definitely do the top to the top there. Um, for whatever reason, I decided to do like this white line. I guess it was easier to find. And on most machines, you can just do there to there, and it'll actually calculate the distance for you. This patient um, had a TAPSI of 1.73, which is just above what we consider normal. If it's less than 1.6, that is diminished. If it's greater than 1.6, it's considered normal. I like binary things. I like when things are just black and white, yes or no. Um, systolic excursion, um, this is very similar. You're going to be doing this in the same area as you do TAPSI, but you are going to be using pulsed wave Doppler instead of your M mode. So it's the same thing. And you want your gait a little bit more apical than what you do with the TAPSI. The TAPSI is basically right on the tricuspid annulus, but you want this to be a little bit closer to the apex. And you're going to get this waveform, which is starting to look a little familiar, right? This is a, a similar looking waveform than the E to A. Um, I have the E to A. They're actually down here off the screen. This thing right here, this is the S wave. Um, and you're using tissue Doppler, by the way. And the, the difference between tissue Doppler and the other Doppler is that the scale is way less because the heart doesn't, obviously doesn't move as fast as the blood moves. So they have to like tone down the scale. Otherwise, it just be this like little tiny blip down here. So you measure the peak of that S wave. And if that, it's 21 on this patient, if it's greater than 10 centimeters per second, the peak velocity, then that is considered normal. It's another way to measure it. You can actually do all three of these methods or you can just pick one. They're just different ways to measure the same thing. Fractional area change is the last one. This is the one that's the hardest to do, so I do it the least, but it is an option. With this one, you definitely need to get, usually, the RV-focused view. You see how it's kind of tilted a little bit, like it's a little swung this way a little bit? You want to measure the area um, in end systole and the area in end diastole. You do the biggest, number minus, the biggest number minus the smallest number divided by the smaller number times 100, and you'll get a percentage. And if you have a fractional area change greater than 35%, that's considered normal. Less than 35% is considered abnormal. This is kind of the most cumbersome one, so I don't use it. But if you look at textbooks, this is just another option to do it. Most of the time, I'm doing TAPSI first. TAPSI doesn't make sense or I want confirmation, then I'll do the S prime. And if for whatever reason I'm not getting the good answer with those, then I will do the fractional area change. And the AAC actually recommends doing all three if you are able to and try and figure it out if they match up. 
That's it for this week's 5-Minute Sono. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to send me a tweet or an email. And as always, don't forget to subscribe. Go to blog5 slash subscribe, put in your name and your email address in the little text box, and never miss another video. And if you want these sent directly to your smart devices, go to whatever podcast service you use, type in 5 Minutes Sono, leave me a rating and a review, and subscribe. If you want to learn more about The Right Heart with me and the rest of the Ultrasound Podcast crew and friends, we have a conference coming up in beautiful Bend, Oregon. Check out the URL here and hopefully see you soon.